Activators, okay. So that's just review for you uh, to study and so on. The other sheet that has a couple of pages to it, we'll be using that in class today. Okay. So uh, that's it. Okay. Wrote a little Latin phrase for you up here to help you with your study. Does anybody know what that Latin phrase means? Repetition. Repetition is the mother of learning. Okay. Repetition is the mother of learning. The more you repeat something to yourself, the more it will stick. Okay. Now it can also hold for bad things too. If you start repeating bad habits, those habits will become learned in your system as well, so be careful what you expose yourself toward. Okay? Alright, so today we're going to start a new section. Okay, we're going to start uh, new chapters dealing with spectroscopy. Okay, this will be found in chapters 12, and 13, 12 and 13, okay? Probably most of you have heard the word spectroscopy, okay? But what does it mean? Well, we can break the word down into two parts, spectro and scopy. Scopy means what? Scope means to what? To look at or to see. And spectro comes from spectrum, which deals with energy. Okay, where we have a different spectrum of energy, anything from, you know, high energy such as uh, gamma rays and X rays, all the way down to low forms of energy such as radio waves. Okay. So, what does this whole thing here? mean? What are we going to be looking at with spectroscopy? What do you think? We're going to look at, look at molecules. Okay? So we want to see molecules okay? Well, when you see something, okay, there's two ways to see something. Okay? What we we can see something directly or indirectly. Okay? What does it mean if you see something directly? What do you think? The outside appearance, the physical appearance. Okay. Anybody else? Let's see something directly, outside appearance. With the naked eye, unaided eye. Yeah. So are you seeing me directly? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm seeing you directly. Mm -hmm. Okay. What does it mean to see something indirectly? Any ideas? Microscope. Don't give me an example. What does it mean to see something indirectly? You have to use something to help see it. Okay. Anything else? See from a mirror. You can see from a mirror, which would be an instrument. Okay. Okay. What you're basically doing indirectly is what? Looking at something else to be able to look at the thing you're looking at, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So it's an indirect. 
okay? Like the mirror. I, don't, I can't see myself, I can't see my eye, but the mirror can tell me that, okay? But I don't need a mirror to see you, okay? So, indirectly, is the way that we're going to look at molecules, okay? You can't see molecules directly, why not? They're too small. They're too small, you can't see them. So I need something to help me to see it, okay? Well, <clears throat> you think of an example where we indirectly see something that maybe a profession uses every day, okay? Maybe if you were uh, an investigator for a crime scene, did, were you able to see the murder that happened? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. But what do you do? You gather evidence. evidence, which is what indirect evidence is an indirect thing or an indirect way to look at something, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So you gather DNA, you gather hair samples, uh, track marks, and all these things. You've seen it on CSI. Okay. So you gather all the evidence to be able to indirectly look at the person that committed the crime, okay? And hopefully catch the person, okay? So that's what we're going to look at molecules, just as a crime scene is invisible as to what happened, okay? We even see the things that are invisible about God. God's invisible, isn't he? You can't see him. But how do we see him through indirect ways, such as his creation. His creation points back to him. I can argue backwards that something exists now. It must have had a starter to bring it into existence. And you can also study about him through his written word and so forth. Okay? So you can learn about God. In fact, that's the only way you can learn about God is indirectly because he's invisible. So, uh, that's what we want to do here is study the invisible molecules by indirect ways. Okay? And the ways of spectroscopy that we're going to use are infrared, NMR, and mass spectroscopy. We've already covered a certain spectroscopy, haven't we? What was that? What we cover in chapter 15? UV spectroscopy. You better be very bad. I'm surprised not everybody answered that one. Hope you're studying. Hope that didn't catch you off guard. Okay? But these are the main ways we're going to learn in this section. Infrared, that's oftentimes called IR spectroscopy. NMR stands for Nuclear Magnetic Resonance Spectroscopy. That's a big one. We'll get to that later. And then also mass spectroscopy. Okay? So these are the three major ways we're going to look at molecules to get an idea of what we're looking at. Okay? Because you might have been asking that. I mean, we've been drawing molecules, looking at reactions and benzene. But how do we know that we're dealing with what we say that we're dealing with? It's nice to put it on the board, but when you get in the lab, how can I know that that really is benzene or that's uh, methanol and so on? Okay? This stuff here is where we learn to identify molecules. Okay? So what we're going to do is study infrared first. Why? Because that's the easiest one. And then we'll get to these harder ones later on. Okay? So let's go ahead and tackle infrared spectroscopy. Okay? Or we'll call it IR spectroscopy mostly. Okay? What does IR spectroscopy look at? Okay. 
It looks at certain bonds in molecules. It looks at certain bonds. Okay. Write it down. IR is not going to look at the whole molecule. It's only going to look at chunks of the molecule. And those chunks are what? The bonds. Some of those specific bonds that we can identify. Okay? Just like in if you were a crime investigator looking at the crime scene, okay, you might see something there, but that doesn't give away who did it, did it? But it's a little bit of evidence that maybe that's where the person's from or something like that. Okay? And that's what IR is going to do. It's not going to give me the full identity of the molecule. It's going to give me little pieces of it that will be very helpful. Okay? So make sure you have that down. We'll see if we can flush that out as we go through this. Okay? So since IR looks at certain bonds within molecules, let's draw a fake bond. Let's say we have atom A and atom B. If we drew a bond between them like that, okay, remember that bond is made up of what? Two electrons, okay? Well, we've been drawing bonds with lines and so on, that's what you're used to, but these bonds in actuality are moving in there. They're moving with a certain kind of motion, okay? And the best way to understand that movement is to redraw this bond as a spring, okay? So you've all seen springs. What kind of motion can a spring do? Yeah, it can flex in and out. What do you say if you pull it out? What's that called? You're stretching it, isn't it? So you got a stretch, you got a compression. Okay, so that, that's what bonds are doing mainly. They're going in and out like that. Okay. So you got a stretch. Okay. <coughs> what else can a spring do? Okay, it can bend. And so on. Okay. So this spring, that bond's doing all these crazy motions at one time that maybe you didn't realize. And it's doing all these motions with particular frequencies. And those frequencies, we will give the symbol, Greek symbol, nu. And the particular units of the frequency will be cm to the minus 1, or how else could you state that? 1 over cm. Okay. Or more technically, you could call this reciprocal centimeters. Okay? That's what we want to start calling that. Reciprocal centimeters. Okay? So, all these have certain frequencies. In fact, if you take your hand out now, Okay. You can see on the front page of the handout, okay, the staple one, that it has these balls here with a string. And you can see the different motions that they have there. Okay. If you go down below on the chart, you see some different stretching frequencies, don't you? For example, if you look at the CH bond, what stretching frequency is with it? 3,000. See that? All the way to the right. 3,000. If you go down to the carbon-carbon bond, what's its stretching frequency? 1,200. If you go down to the carbon-carbon double bond, what's its stretching frequency? 1,660. Or we're going to kind of generalize that to the 1,600s. Okay. Triple bond, 2,200. All the way down to carbonyl. What's the carbonyl showing us? 1700. 
Okay, so those are some important numbers that yes, we're going to have to memorize. Okay, so these are important stretching frequencies. And let's make a summary of these on the board. my unit of frequency? Reciprocal centimeters. Okay. So that's what these are here. So these are my frequencies in reciprocal centimeters. Sometimes you'll hear these frequencies called wave numbers, but we'll just stick with frequency. Okay? And this is where all the bonds are going to show up between 4,000 and 600. I'm going to give you the certain ones that are trademarks that we're going to be looking for in molecules. Okay? And these stretches are going to have what we look like what are called upside down peaks. Okay? So let me give you the uh, first one here. The first one to become familiar with is like this little blob. Okay? this blob, it has a frequency of about 3,500, and that's going to be for an OH bond. So an OH bond has a stretching frequency of 3,500. Okay. Let's look at another bond. Comes down a little bit further. at 3,000. Anybody remember which one that was on the front page? Carbon hydrogen. The carbon hydrogen. Okay, so it's a little less down there. If we keep going down, at 2,200, it's a characteristic of the nitrile, C triple bond N. If we come down a little further, at 1700, this was the C double bond O that we call the carbonyl. And if we come down just a little bit further here, at 1600, the C double bond C. Okay. So, it's not drawn very proportionately to the upper numbers, but that's okay. You want to memorize these five numbers. Very important. Okay, I'm only giving you five. That's okay. <coughs> There's a lot more I could give you. Okay. There'll be a couple more I'll give you as we look at some examples. Okay? So, these are the stretching frequencies that you want to remember. Okay, these are sharp ones, and this you would say is a broad stretch. Okay, these upside down peaks. Okay, they you can call them upside down peaks, but more particularly they're called bands, IR bands. Okay, so we'll be using both kinds of terms. Okay. So any questions on those bands? Okay. So let's start using this because this is where we want to head toward here. Okay. Turn to the second page of your handout and let's look at some live real IR spectrum. Okay, let's look at the top one. 
Okay, see the frequencies there? Here they're on the bottom, 4,600. See that? Wave numbers, reciprocal centimeters. Mm -hmm. Then you have all those upside down peaks or the bands. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at this one. Tell me which bands that we've learned are sticking out to you. Just give me the numbers. 1,600. Anything else? 1,733. Yeah. Anything else? 3,000. Okay. So those are the main peaks that we've looked at from up here. I hope you're looking at the right page. Okay. Let me give you a picture, draw the molecule for you. You had no idea that that was the molecule. Okay, that'd be impossible. Okay, but you did have an idea of what? Some of the bonds in there. What were some of the bonds that you knew were in there? Okay, you knew the double bonds. Okay, around 1600. Okay, found in the benzene. You knew you had a carbonyl at 1700. And you also knew you had carbon hydrogen bonds, mm -hmm. which, guess what? They'll be in all the molecules mostly, so that's not going to be a huge help. Okay? So that's how IR works. See how kind of simple that is? Just gives you pieces of it. No way could you have drawn what that was, because there's thousands and millions of other options you could have done that. Okay? Go down to the bottom one, 2,5-dimethyl, 2,4-hexadiene. See what kind of information that one's giving you. What information is that one giving you? Okay, you see a peak where at? Sixteen fifty, C double bond C. So I know I have that. And what else do I know is in there? Carbon hydrogens at 3,000. That's about it. Okay. All right. The structure of this. Is this here? Okay. And again, that IR could have represented thousands of different structures. But. 1650, it's showing these C double bond C's. Okay. You also note on the compare the top and the bottom graphs, look at the CH's. Do you see any difference in the CH bands? Mm -hmm. What's the difference, do you see? Mm -hmm. This one up here had a shorter one, didn't it? Mm -hmm. This one down here was real strong. Okay, why is that? Well, when you have benzenes in there, their CHs tend to be very short in the band. 
when you have non-benzenes, they tend to be a lot stronger carbon hydrogens in terms of the absorbance. Okay? And we'll see that in some other examples. Okay? Why don't you look at the middle one? See if you can draw some data, write down some data about this middle spectrum. That's not going to give me much information. There should be something else there that's sticking out. Okay, we haven't covered that. Okay. There should be one that has a number on there. I, I just asked what I said. Just asking her. Seventeen oh five, which is a what's that stand for? Okay, carbonyl. Okay. So we got a carbonyl there. Okay. Anything else anybody saw? Okay. Oh, well, yeah, you see, yeah, you have the CH. It's a short one, so that probably tells you you have a what in there? A benzene. Okay. Well, if you also look at 3,500, okay, as was spotted out, we have another peak, but it's not this broad kind of picture, is it? It's a little jagged, okay? And this represents a, another kind of bond we want to introduce. Okay, when you have this jagged bond, that's an NH bond. Okay. So we'll see that NH bonds can either be a real jagged thing or even it'll be a real sharp peak there. Okay. But OHs will always be this blob, this broad stretch. Okay. Yeah. Are you talking about the jagged? You're just talking about on 3500? That's right. Just okay. at 3500. So let's take a look at what this molecule was, methyl paramino benzoate. ring, we see the carbonyl here, and we saw the jagged NH peak at 3,500. Okay. Are we going to be asked to draw these based off like information? No. Okay. Again, you cannot draw, it'd be impossible for me to ask you to draw that. Just be able to identify, <laughs> that's right, parts of it. 
talk a little. Yeah. On that one on the bottom, when you had the 1650, uh, you called it the, uh, you said it was the carbon carbon bar. How do you know whether to go up or down to round it? You say if you said, why is that important? You know, should we call it 1600 or 1700? No, anything in the 1600s is a carbon carbon double bond. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So even if it's like 1690. That's right. Like 1690. Anything under, yeah, in that little window there. Okay. okay. What, what do you say about the, the peak in, in the 1600s, one of them being short and one of them being long in the benzene ring? No. Say anything about that in the 1600s. So how do we that was the, okay, that was in the three thousand. In the three thousand? Right. So, okay, so the, the three shorter, the shorter shorter one to three thousands will be a benzene. Okay. okay, let's go to the next page. Okay, look at the top one there. Okay, get introduced to something a little new. Okay, and this top one, if you look at it, what kind of thing is sticking out in that one? I mean, what shape? Look at that gigantic peak there. Yeah. Well, what other peaks are in there? Yeah, something around 17 and 1600, so it's like a carbonyl and a C double bondo. So, let me draw the molecule for this one here. Okay. Here's what this molecule is. And if you look, we have this functional group here, which is the carboxylic acid group. Okay. Carboxylic acids always stick out like a sore thumb. Okay. In that they will always have the carbonyl at 1700, but they also have this huge stretch that basically goes from 3,500 all the way down there. It's a gigantic stretch. Okay? And that it's representing the OH as part of the acid, but it's not a regular alcohol like this thing is. But when it's attached to a carbonyl, it gives this huge stretch because of a lot of hydrogen bonding that it can do. Okay? And so that's how we can tell the difference between an acid and an alcohol. You'll have this mountain of a stretch versus this little blob of a stretch contained at 3,500. Okay? So make sure you know the difference between an alcohol and an acid stretch. You might ask on here, this thing has CHs, but where's the CH in this one? It's what? Encompassed in the acid stretch. The acid stretch is swallowing up all the other stretches. Okay? It's similar to if you put a drop of water in the ocean. Do you still have that drop of water there? Yeah, it just swallowed up by the ocean. Okay. I think I saw maybe five people write down what I just said. Okay. All right, let's drop down to the bottom two. Okay, and see if you can work those out on your own. Write down the data that you're seeing in both of those. Then we'll come back.
which of these two molecules, okay, go with red, which of these two molecules is the middle spectrum? Okay, I'm asking him. Why is that? Because it has a, it has a peak at 220. 2200? 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, which is that C triple bond end. Good. See how that's still got like a sore thumb? Okay, boom. The other one didn't have something at 2200, did it? What else is this one given? The C double bond C. The C double bond C's. And then, of course, the CH's there. Okay? So here you saw this nitrile group stick out at 2200, like a sore thumb. And the bottom one, what's sticking out about this one on the spectrum? What's sticking out on that? Nothing that the other one doesn't have. Okay, tell me something that's in the there that's on the ground. Uh, the CH bonds and the carbon. Well, bonds. CH is no the carbon game. carbon double bonds. Carbon carbon double bonds. What else? What's this here? Okay. How do I know that's an NH and not an OH? Yeah, it's sharp. Sharp at 3500 NH. If it was broad, it would have been an OH. Okay? So that's this little piece here is showing up. Okay? So don't forget about that NH there. Okay? And these are how the, you might ask, well, how are you going to ask all these problems on a test or a quiz? Okay? Well, there's a couple ways I can ask them. One way, I give you the molecule and you tell me all the different stretches you would see. Okay? Pretty easy. The second way is I could give you two or three or four molecules and two or three or four IRs, and you match them, you see? Kind of like what we did here, where I asked you to match which of these went with which spectrum, okay? And that's what you did, you did it right. You look for the certain groups or the certain bonds and see which one had those certain stretches, okay? Any questions? That's all IR is. It's that simple. Okay? When we get into the other spectroscopies, they'll be a little bit more challenging. Okay? All right. So, again, you can go to your review sessions today. If you meet Wednesday, you can go to today's to take your quiz. Okay? And I'll look to see you in lecture on Wednesday.